What's going on family? Welcome back to another compilation to our reaction videos. I'm so happy to have you guys here. Now, wait, wait, wait. I know, I don't know. My eyelashes are super long right now. Dramatic. And they might be a little crooked. But guess what? Store some nice videos. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, 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 okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Where's the one guy going? What you need to know about Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's one, watch that again. What's two, going on? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Boom. Boom. One, two, three. Oh hell no, what kind of magic is that? What kind of magic is that? I don't know what just happened. Where'd the one guy go? This is what you need to know about BRICS and why everybody is panicking. BRICS stands for Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. BRICS okay. has actually been out since 2001. That term was actually coined from a banker from JP Morgan. So they've actually been around. Everybody's been scared like, oh my God, it's a new alliance. No, they've actually been around. The only reason why everybody is panicking right now is because they're getting other countries off the U.S. dollar and more countries are joining them. The reason why the de-dollarization is affecting the U.S. and other countries that use the U.S. dollar is because of hyperinflation. The hyperinflation mm -hmm. is being caused by more dollars on the market. Basically meaning the more of something that you have, the less valuable it is. Like $100 would mean nothing if you could just look on the curb and just pick up $100 and everyone has it. Scarcity equals value and because more countries are not using it because they're joining BRICS and they're using their own currencies there's more US dollars on the market the biggest thing these European countries fear is if they bolster up and empower the African nations Africa has the most resources they have the most gold and more European countries are being kicked out of Africa so they can have their own resources for themselves and build their own infrastructure and once these currencies are backed by gold Oh, it's a problem. That might start World War III. This is the reason why they got rid of me and Mar Gaddafi because he was trying to do the same thing. He was trying to unite the African nations and have a gold-backed and resource-backed dollar. That would have bankrupted the euro. Well, that's it's Simpson. Woo! I feel like the only way this can ever possibly end or change for the better, I'm not, I mean, maybe not for the better, but just change in general, is if there's another war. Prediction on X, X, XRP. X, X, XL in stock. I found XLN stock. How much would you like what? to buy? Um, I don't know. <coughs> pairs. Submitting order for a thousand shares of XLN stock. Please confirm. confirm. Ignoring question mark. Buy order executed. <gasps> oh no, Maggie! I accidentally bought excellent burger stock. But I feel awful if the stock would go <gasps> up. It just went up. We made money. Found oh, uh, oh, there. Whoa. Hidden message. Y'all, we are like three videos in this, and it's already crazy. Like, what, what, what's going on? What's going on out here? Like, the gems are just flying at us. Operates in secrecy, and most people think that what happens in Hollywood, it's just that's Hollywood, it's over there. It's it, but it goes out to the world, you know, it's the messaging system for our minds, it's the mirror we're given to look into from such an early age. And it's a really narrow group of people making these films, and so it's a mirror that's really it's like a messed up mirror. Here's what you are as a man, here's what you are as a girl, here's what you are as a woman, here's what you are as a boy. And it twists your head and you have to be really, really careful when you're there. Mm -hmm. And I think people need to be careful even when they're casually watching movies or TV. Start looking at the information they're giving you, not just in the lines. Guys, isn't it crazy that it's taken us this long to realize these things? Like it's taken us this long to comprehend and understand that this is really what's going on. Like we're just being programmed somebody said that if you're not programming yourself as in if you're not learning you're not reading you're not researching somebody else is programming you there's no other choice it's either you are or they are I woke up yet it's a hell of a time to in case you haven't figured out yet simpson's predictions are not predictions at all it's called predictive programming that's what i've been saying what does that mean 
That means that they are planting these seeds in your head and we are collectively manifesting these events to happen at different levels. If you question that, just explain to me how these guys keep predicting the future. Every time an event happens, you can find a Simpsons episode on it. Latest predictions from the Simpsons mm -hmm. for 2024 are truly strange. One is particularly unsettling. In season 24, episode 9, Homer Simpson prepares a fully stocked bunker for his family, anticipating something terrible. Yeah, no lie, down the street from my house, somebody's building something that looks just like that. I'm pretty sure it's for other purposes, but it looks just like that. It's underground and everything, and there's nothing on top of it. So that's just crazy, but I'm pretty sure it's not a bunker or anything like that. On the horizon. Shortly after, a super powerful solar storm hits Springfield. An invisible and silent hurricane sweeps through the city causing severe consequences. Coming, this catastrophic event leads to a complete halt of the internet and it's electricity so for several weeks, if not. Dang, you guys. How do you feel about that? Do you feel like it's giving us information so we subconsciously manifest these things? Because, like, we're all getting these images. And I guess, the, you know, whatever they feed us, we recreate kind of in reality. I don't know about that. How do you guys feel about that? I feel like they are the people that are creating the script and the people that are creating the event. Let me know what y'all think. North Pole. The North Pole's been sailed every year for 30 years. Uh, it's off from the North Pole several hundred miles. This is in a region that's never been sailed before. It's between the magnetic North Pole and the actual North Pole. The waters are reported to be the roughest on the planet. So we're talking 10-story seas. This is not going to be a pleasure cruise by any stretch of the imagination. We'll be breaking ice for eight days to get there. So it's, it's an, not an easy place to get to. Antarctica is super interesting, but there's just no way that I would want to go discover what's over there because it's so cold and it just looks dangerous as heck. Like it, it's very interesting, but, but do I have the motivation to go explore it? I don't think so. You know these kids are kind of going places they never heard from again, right? No. Are you with me, sir? Can, can I ask what company what? you're with? No. No? What? You, you won't tell me? No. Okay. Why are you being so secretive? Don't worry about it, sir. Can you stop asking me? Don't take a picture of me. You're not authorized to go. You better call the FBI or it's something. No They're probably in on it too, though. Hey, what company are you guys with? Where are you guys taking this kid? Where's this kid? Is this your kid here? Look, sir, they got... Your kid? They got the lady there. They always have a woman to make it look like everything is safe and everything is okay and kosher. Hey, cuantos años? It's okay. It's okay. Whoa. Amigo, amigo. Amigo. Cuantos años? Don't do it. Que, que país? Y'all took me so long to read this because I can, I can, I can barely, I can barely see right now. The kids? No. Hey, are these your kids, sir? We could clearly see that's not a family, that's not a dad, that's not a mom, that's not their kids. Because if any any normal parent-child trip or situation like this, the kids would probably talk or um the father would just probably be like, you need to back the up because why are you speaking to my kids? Who are you? You know, he would defend his kids. He would put up that wall. He would be kind of like the front barrier in between whoever that is asking questions. Because who are you to ask questions, right? If you're a parent, that's how you would be thinking. So clearly something is going on here. The planet Zog, and this is David Rockefeller. Now they co-founded the Trilateral Commission, one of those organizations in that Bilderberg Council on Foreign Relations uh, network. They want a world of regions. If you're gonna have total control of people in the Orwellian police state, this is why you know things like the Hunger Games, they have sectors which are fenced off from the other sectors. 
It's you need to do it right into the local level if you want total control. And this is why you're seeing this movement of the police state going into communities. So one area of this structure that they want is breaking countries up into regions. This is one of the maps for how they intend to break up Europe. European Union into regions and what they, they have planned is that regions of one country are connected into regions uh, in another therefore destroying national sovereignty and national unity because they want an end to sovereignty they want an end to all of it they just want technocrats bureaucrats this is something called America 2050 this is all connected into the agenda for agenda 21 and they have broken up America into a series of sí. mega regions sí. In which they will have mega cities, what they call human settlement zones. Y'all need to really Google or YouTube these type of um dystopian environments. They're already building some on the ground. Like when I tell you this is going to be like house arrest, prison, neighborhood environments, it's going to get so bad if we don't do something. If we don't put our foot down to these little laws that they're putting up now. And it's so close. It's gonna be like within a blink of an eye, you know? We're gonna we're gonna feel like, oh, we're okay with these laws. They're not so bad. And then boom, you're going to wake up in one of them little dystopian cities where your time, your food, and everything else is controlled, which it kind of already is now. You ever eaten ramen noodles? Exactly. Here's the deal. New research I love from them. the Mayo Clinic is showing that it can increase the risk for metabolic syndrome, especially for women. And that can mean increased risk for heart problems, stroke, and diabetes. But researchers say it's not just ramen. Any instant noodle products could be putting you in danger if you're eating them more than twice a week. So why are women affected the most? Probably because of BPA that's found in the packaging, which is known to mess with those estrogen levels. Y'all know what is so messed up is that when we were kids, we didn't really get a choice in regards to what was in the house or what we could choose to eat. And on top of that, those were so bomb. We wanted to eat them anyways. But I need y'all to put an emoji up with either the noodle bowl or put your hand up. If this was like a staple in your teenage years because, you know, when your parents weren't home, they didn't have time to cook. Or when you just wanted to eat something after school, the noodles were really a staple. And besides the noodles, 99% of the stuff that we ate is so bad for us. But for some reason, only now we're realizing that after we consumed like, th like thousands of these boxes of different brands of bad food. Wow, that's wild. Hold on, so the patterns were changing depending on the sound and the frequency. That's very interesting. There's so much about sound that we don't know. And I wish they would teach this stuff in school, especially for healing purposes. Sound can literally make miracles. Today, the King James Version, John 16, 23, 24, what you have is the condensed version. You have the edited version. The edited version looks like this. Whatsoever ye ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name. Ask and ye shall receive that your joy may be full. This is the edited version. This is so amazing to me because they took out the two sentences that tell us how to ask. Now here's the piece that was edited. Here is Man. what was lost. Look at these two very powerful sentences. Ask without hidden motive and be surrounded by your answer. Be enveloped by what you desire that your gladness be full. Look at what it's saying. But let me ask you, why are F... Y'all, that was probably the deepest you ever just heard or seen. And that was like, 15 or 30 seconds long i need y'all to run that back and really understand what he just said you know when people speak about manifestation a lot of people don't understand the process of it but also manifestation is the process of actual prayer and how to make these things come into reality yes we do know how to ask in our own way but there is an actual step-by-step -step recipe on how to do it and they had the nerve to take that out very interesting that for the past three videos we've been learning a lot about king james 
But most importantly, you guys, run this video right back and really understand and comprehend and definitely apply it. FBI agents guarding a cave in the Grand Canyon, keeping hidden from public eyes temples and hieroglyphics we find only in ancient Egypt? Why are there more pyramids in the Americas than there are in Egypt? And why was the Smithsonian ordered by a Supreme Court ruling to admit that they were hiding the bones of giants? If dendrochronology methods or dating the age of trees are misleading as stated by Fomenko, how would we prove that certain mountains aren't simply trunks of once cut down immensely gigantic trees? And lastly, why was the word dragon replaced by dinosaur, a word not in existence prior to mid-1800s? The Tartarian Empire may have just recently ended, but it strangely lives on in the world of cinematic fantasy. Like most government cover-ups, they fictionalize the truth by making it Hollywood. Think Game of Thrones. So if unintended disclosures occur, people will brush it off as Hollywood fantasy and choose to not believe it. In our next film, we'll explore the depths of proof that have illuminated millions in understanding that our world was once inhabited by mythical creatures, giants, incredible healing and energy the tartarian subject is very intriguing but i just don't know too much about it i i need to get into it a little bit more attention you all know real world supervillain bill gates right and one of the things he's been pushing for over the decades is gmo food now we know what gmo is right it's when you want a watermelon without seeds in it or to grow strawberries when it's a little bit cold outside but the truth is a little bit more insidious than that you see, GMO doesn't just alter the genes of the foods we're eating, it has the capability of altering our genes. And the good people of Missouri have just stood up to this. They put forward a bill called HB 1169 Gene Therapy wow. Disclosure and Informed Consent Bill. And basically what they're saying is if these GMO foods have the potential to alter our genetic code, then we damn sure should be well aware of that and consent to it. And interestingly enough, a biotech lobbyist on the scene openly admitted that the food does in fact have that capability. It can. Now, I don't know about you, but I think this should be mainstream news. A lot of these foods we eat on a daily basis. And the scary part is what could be slipped into our food supply down the road without us. A lot of people know this and it's really everywhere. We choose convenience over health and just convenience over knowledge. Like we can really know this information and still go to the store and choose to eat something that's GMO. Now here's a sculpture by an unknown African artist. And here's what Paul Clay took from him. And here's a work by an unknown black African, and Pablo Picasso liked what he saw. Another African design, and Modigliani swiped it, or he was influenced by it, or whatever polite word you want to use. Another black African artist, and Picasso didn't change it very much. I mean, when you look at this copy, you got to give us a little more than rhythm. You got to give us style now if you tell the history of slavery right you got a big problem on your hands the slave trader didn't take some savage out of africa he took a human being he sold him like an animal and separated him from his family it's very interesting that we just now get to see these videos because of social media look how old that video is and look at us just now watching this there are beings that is walking this earth and they are not human. I just came from Kroger's. I just got off of work. I went to go pick up a few items, y'all. I go to the bread aisle. Now, the bread aisle is super long. I'm at one end of the bread aisle. There's a guy that's about three-fourths of the way down in the bread aisle. He got a cart. I got a cart. He's looking at me. And you know how you can see out your peripheral that somebody's staring at you. He ain't just looking, but he's staring at me. I kind of look his way. He's still staring. I go ahead and I get my bread. 
I go back around the other way because I'm going to the international aisle to get some pasta and some other stuff. While I'm in the international aisle at one Ooh. end, this guy comes around and he's at the top of the same aisle. I see him still looking at me. Now, mind you, there's a couple of things that I need to get out of that aisle. So the first part of the aisle, I grab what I need to grab and I go about midways down. He's at the other end. So he's staring at me still. So I kind of look at him and I go like, how do you give somebody that type of look? He's still staring. So I'm looking for what I'm looking for. I can't really find it because he's throwing me off because he keeps staring. Mind you, this man don't have nothing in his cart. He's not even turned to look at any food. He's looking directly at me. By this time, I'm like, you know what? I'm not on it. I'm about to just stare you down. So I turn to look at him. Y'all, when I tell you, this man stared at me and his eyes turned black. Everything no. in his, his whole eyeball, not just the pupil, but the white part turned completely black. He looked, it said black, and then he walked away. When I tell you I left that car sitting in that aisle, I didn't even buy nothing from Kroger's. I left out and I came home. There is stuff. There is beings that is walking in this earth and they at the store. They at whatever. They look like us and everything mm -hmm. else, but they are not human. I don't even know what to say. Woo! Yeah. I need a break because when I tell you, look, I just sat down across my legs like I'm in the office. Because it's really serious. Like, when I tell you guys, this is so real. Please, if you've seen something like this, let me know. Because I have seen something like this. I've seen it two times, many, many years apart. The first time I've ever saw this was back in the day when I didn't know about conspiracy theories. I didn't know about reptilians. I didn't know any of that stuff. I just remember this man. Now, nothing crazy happened before I seen this man and nothing crazy happened after I seen this man. So I don't understand why I have this memory of this moment. And at the same time, I do because I saw somebody that was not just anybody, if you know what I'm saying, just like she described. There's a difference when you're into that type of stuff. So, you you know, you, your mind might play tricks on you, but I promise you, I didn't know anything about any of this stuff. And when I saw this man for a split second and he looked through my soul, this man was a good distance away from me. But when I when I tell you I felt like he was right there in my face, looking into my eyes and through my soul, I will never forget it. And that moment lasted literally like 0.5 seconds. And I will never forget ever in my life because that's how memorable and distinct that it was. Y'all don't think I'm fucking crazy. I'm walking down the street, walking back from the store. There's this guy probably about 15 feet behind me. And you know how you can tell someone's walking behind you. I look back, and he's just fucking looking at me. He stops when I stop. So I walk forward a little bit. You know, I keep walking like that. And I say, fuck this shit, man. I turn around, I go, what? What's your fucking problem? I swear to God, in my mother's grave, this guy's eyes was jet fucking black. Jet fucking black. She just said Seriously. that. Smiling like that, man. I fucking <laughs> turned around. Fuck it, I fucking ran. I said, fuck this shit, dude. Fuck this shit. I come home. I'm sitting out there. Where my street is. Like that. That fucking corner right there. But I stopped saying that motherfucker <laughs> was standing right fucking there, dude. Come in here. Get my gun. Look out again. He's gone. That dude was not fucking human. That's real life scared. And that's not a boy, a teenager. That's a grown man. You understand me? This man was so shook. You could see it in his voice, his eyes, the way he's acting, the way he's putting his hands up, the way he's looking around. This man is scared. Okay? I don't think he would have been that scared of a regular human being. 
Some pretty incredible breaking news coming out in the last 24 hours. Happening now across the United States could be a nationwide shutdown, and this is going to be unfolding due to cyber attacks against infrastructure systems in the U.S. coming from China. Now, we've been receiving these warnings from the FBI for several months that Chinese hackers had infiltrated infrastructure systems in the <laughs> U.S. We had heard that there was about 24 of them. Then we received new updates that there are actually more, and they're saying significantly more, and also they're saying that they actually compromised these over the course of the last five years, some even longer, and they did not know. And now we're finding out, and they're saying it is at unprecedented scales, the likes of which we did not realize. Now, take a look at the headlines and all of these coming out in the last 24 hours as the FBI warns yesterday, Sunday, February the 18th, of what's going to be coming. Take a look at this. FBI Director Ray says, China, cyber attacks on U.S. infrastructures now at unprecedented scale. They're saying there is more than they realized, and this is essentially plans to shut down the entire nation and wreak havoc. Christopher Ray warns that the prepositioned malware could be triggered to disrupt critical systems in the United States. FBI director warns China's computer attacks are now at a scale greater than we'd seen before, as vulnerable critical infrastructure remains at high risk to be targeted. FBI warns Chinese malware could threaten critical U.S. infrastructure. Agency director Christopher Ray says Beijing hacking operations have reached a fever pitch, and FBI says China's cyber attacks on U.S. infrastructure are reaching new levels. And again, all of these coming out in the last 20 four hours. Now I'm going to be sharing with you the latest details, and I know this is not what we want to hear, but I believe that knowledge is power and us knowing what's going on is half of the battle. So make preparations for you and your family. I'm, I'm really getting ready to fall asleep, but at the same time be super frustrated because what y'all are going to stop doing every time something happens is blame our Chinese friends, okay? Cyber attacks, China. Unidentified aircraft flowing in the air, China. Pen Demic, you know, CO, VID, China. I feel like everything that happens, y'all want to blame everybody else, okay? I feel like it's an agenda, okay? To blame somebody else again, that way you guys can cover up for whatever the y'all up to. It's always Russia. It's always China. It's always Africa. It's always the Middle East. 99% of the times, it's the United States. Now... If y'all actually showed us that you care about us, your credibility is lost, okay, to me. The U.S. is always the good guys, okay? It's just so convenient. I don't know. What do you guys think? Am I over-exaggerating? But why, why is it always somebody else the bad guy? Breaking news. Last night, a satellite the size of a school bus crashed into the Pacific Ocean in between Hawaii and Alaska. Okay. And this morning, thousands report issues with their cell phone service being out. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, no, it's the satellites. Okay. All right. Tens of okay. thousands of cell phones, users all across the U.S. have no service. AT&T, Cricket, other U.S. partners have reported these issues. Verizon and T-Mobile users report they do have service. AT&T peaked with over 74,000 customer complaints wow. this morning. People are reporting having difficulties contacting 911. Wow. Officials okay. advising the use of a landline or social media, like who has a landline? Satellites are not for internet data. It's more so underwater cables and towers, right? So I don't think the two are related, maybe just coincidental. What do y'all think? I love you. Have a good day. What do we think? Let me tell you what I think. I think they're going to give us multiple choices that we could choose from because there's all kind of different people around. Conspiracy theorists, theorists, truthers, regular people. And we're going to choose what we want to believe. We're going to choose what reality we want to believe. And that's how they do us every time, right? But on the other hand, make sure that you guys are always prepared if something like this happens for a long period of time. Y'all, these compilations were amazing. I absolutely loved every single one of those videos. And you guys, all that is fine and dandy, but at the end of the day, I want to say thank you so much for being here with me, watching these videos, reacting to these videos. You guys make the channel and this amazing YouTube family. Keep liking the videos, keep sharing the videos, you guys. And if you are brand new here, come join the family. All you got to do is subscribe and just support us by liking the videos. Hit that notification bell down below as well so you could be notified every single time that we release a new video. But anyways, guys, we all got to get up out of here. So for now, be good and do right. And I will catch you on the next one.